It's quite possible that humanity is simultaneously on the verge of a massive population crisis right at the moment that we're creating a brand new species to replace us. Does it sound like doom mongering? Maybe a little bit, but I do think that these are very real risks that we should be thinking about a lot more. So I'll talk about the population crisis in a minute. First up, the new species. I'm clearly talking about AI. So a few different things to cover here. First up, Microsoft has recently published a paper saying that they believe the latest large language models like ChatGPT are showing sparks of AGI. That's artificial general intelligence or essentially human level intelligence. It means they think that these machines are starting to reason at a level that is roughly equivalent to people, you and I. Uh, now that obviously doesn't make them a new species, but there is also another development that we need to talk about. That is that researchers have recently created things called xenobots or xenobots. Uh, now these are tiny little synthetic organisms basically that can move around of their own volition and most importantly they can reproduce themselves these have been designed using ai and are now a thing uh, that uh, there's, there's videos out there you can check them out so ai is literally creating life so if you take both of these things the large language models reasoning at a human level and potentially beyond and microorganisms artificially created that can reproduce. It doesn't take a massive leap of the imagination to kind of see where this could potentially be going. A new species. There are very, very smart people who are kind of describing AI as such. One of them, Max Tegmark, super famous um, physicist, machine learning researcher, wrote a book called Life 3.0, which is really great. I would recommend you check it out. He basically describes uh, AI as uh, an alien intelligence which is smarter than us. Um, now that's worrying because humans have obviously been the smartest species on the planet for as long as we've been around. And you don't have to look far to see what happens to the other species that are less clever than us. This is why the so-called alignment problem is such a big deal. There is kind of too much to go into in this video on the alignment problem, but basically there's no reason to think that these intelligent machines will care about the same things that we do. I mean, we don't really know exactly what it is that we care about on a, on a deep moral level. We all disagree. But there's also no reason to think that AI will care about the sanctity of human life in the same way that we do. It's also worrying to think that in future, humans might not really even be needed. AI is beginning to take up more and more white collar jobs. We've already automated lots of other ones. So we could potentially get to a stage where there isn't really any work for humans to do. Now, it's kind of an existential question, but in many ways, you know, why would humans need to be around if we're not needed? Many of us need to feel needed. Uh, there's an economist called Peter Zion who makes the point that as hu human populations urbanize and move into cities, they start having fewer children. Children are essentially free labor in agricultural society. Uh, and so people tend to have lots of them as they urbanize and move into more technological jobs in offices, in factories, they tend to have fewer of them. And if humans have no reason to live, what's the incentive to create more of them? So that kind of brings me on to the next point, which is that we might be slowly removing ourselves from the planet anyway. Uh, birth rates around the world have been gradually dropping, but steadily dropping all over the world since the 60s. So the global fertility rate is estimated to be about 2.3 in the 2020s, which is just above replacement rate. But in pretty much all of the West, it's below replacement rate and has been for some time. In the US, it's currently about 1.6 births per woman. In the UK, it's worse at 1.56. In some places like Korea, it's verging on catastrophic at 0.84. So you don't have to be a maths genius to figure out that a consistent drop below replacement rate is going to compound over time and populations will start to fall dramatically. Now, nobody knows exactly why they're dropping, but it's clear to me that society can either exacerbate this problem or it can improve it. Uh, I've, I've mentioned in previous videos, my worries about AI porn being hyper-personalized and taking people out of the mating pool. Some commenters have actually mentioned that, that dating apps um, are a big part of that. One of the graphs I shared showed the advent of Tinder and the growth of sexlessness amongst men. This is a very worrying thing. So what happens when a new species of AI gets better than us at pretty much everything, just at the time when we don't seem to be sufficiently able to replace ourselves. 
I mean, I don't know the answer. Uh, and maybe you think I'm drawing tangents here across different things that are unrelated, but I do think that technology in general has a pretty significant role to play here. And I do think it's something that we should all be talking about and thinking about a lot more. It definitely needs people far smarter than me to, to be thinking about this and coming up with ideas and solutions. But there are two pretty serious existential risks that seem to be happening to me at pretty much the exact same time. So that's my view. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, maybe you think I'm being a doom monger. Maybe you think all of these worries are completely overblown. Perhaps. I really hope that's the case. Um, but yeah, leave a comment and I will see you next time. Hi. If you're still watching, that means you are probably one of the 20% or so most engaged viewers of, uh, of this video. So I just want to say thank you very much. It's probably likely that if you've seen previous ones, you'll be among the commenters or the likers or sharers. So I just want to say thanks for all of the comments. The reception so far has been great. I'm reading all of them and I'm doing my best to respond to all of them as well. Please do keep subscribing and keep commenting. Um, I really do appreciate it.